Hey everyone, Johnny Trucking here. And uh, today is the day I just got my, uh, my truck assigned to me. It's right here behind me. Uh, let's take a look at it and then I'm gonna talk about it just a little bit and uh, what this process has been so far. But let's take a look around and see how it, see how it looks. this mind the mess a little bit I haven't had a chance to move in yet but this is the inside of the truck this is the inside of my truck as you can tell uh, it is a used truck so it's got quite a bit of mileage on it but everything seems to be working on it but this is what the inside of it looks like and I'll talk about it what this experience has been so far and whatnot as we take a look here, I got the top bunk. I just got my stuff up there right now. Uh, I got my bedding right here on the bottom stuff. Haven't, like I said, I haven't had a chance to really uh, move in, but this is the space. This is the space that you usually will see in most sleeper cabs. You'll get about, you know, let me stand in the space, kind of. See, I'm in the middle of the space. This is kind of what the whole entire 360 thing is like. So you'll get the top bunk. All your bottom bunk you if you want to if you don't want to utilize the top bunk you can just lift it up and then it opens up the wall space a little bit more if that's what you'd rather do more than likely that's probably what i'm going to do uh, but for now as i'm getting myself situated in here i'm going to use it kind of as storage uh, plus i gotta send the truck in for a couple of uh, repairs so i don't really want to unload everything just yet but uh, for now, it's just I'm using this space as storage. This is where you would usually put, like, if you wanted a microwave, you could put a microwave right here, and you'd have hookups there. I don't know if you can see them there. I'm gonna try to uh, try my best to see if I can get them there. But uh, you have uh, electrical hookups there. Luckily, with this, with the, with these company trucks already from CFI, they come already installed with inverters in the side cab. Uh, are in the side cabin so there's already so there's already inverters and electrical outlets in place so that's nice for those people that get into newer trucks out of the out of the factories and whatnot you're gonna have to probably install your own inverters but luckily I do not have to do that so that's nice but you know you got a lot of storage space got storage space up here uh, this is your closet area here and so this here is kind of like a closet so you can uh you get a little bit of space down here i wish i could make this a little bit more brighter um you know i probably can here probably can uh yeah so i'm gonna keep talking here but yeah you get this here oh, i'm looking for this. this this is by the way guys this is grade a production here you know just kind of on the move kind of talk on the move while you're trying to figure shit out <laughs> but here we go so yeah, so you get uh, cubby space down here. You get uh, cubby space up here. A uh, place if you want to hang your clo some, clo some clothes here, you can hang them here on the little bar that's there. You don't have to, but it's up to you. You get little cubby holes here. So you can see little cubby holes there, little cubby holes there for things like, you know, if you want to put your, uh, your shoes and stuff in here and whatnot, you get little, there's little cubby spaces all over this thing. So it's not too bad. Uh, place to like hang more stuff if you want to hang more clothes or whatever jackets uh, I'm probably gonna put like my jackets I'm probably gonna hang them up right here just because it makes it easier maximize the space a little bit um, and then down here on the bottom here this is where you would install a specific type of uh, a specific type of refrigerator 
that's specifically made for this spot here. You can typically find them at uh, at like Loves and stuff like that. And uh, I think they sell them at Tractor Supply. I'm not really sure. Um, but uh, as you can see there, it's the kind of refrigerator where you'll utilize the uh, the little like cigarette, you know, lighter plug thing. I forget what you call those, like a car port. It's like a car electrical port. I forget what you call those the damn things. But yeah, either way, like you'll use that port there to plug it in. And then it'll just sit here. And it's specifically made to fit this little cubby right here. If you don't have a fridge, you can use it for whatever you want. If you want to get a different size fridge, it, it more than likely you, I mean, if you can find one that fits in here, great. The problem is, is that you're gonna have to find a way either A, to run electrical from over here all the way over here, or you're gonna have to find a way to bring uh, an extension cord or something from the bottom of the truck um, where, the, where the inverter is into the top up here in order to plug it in. So it would probably make more sense that if you wanted to put, uh, that if you wanted to put a, fr a different size refrigerator that wasn't gonna fit in here, you could probably put it over here. But uh, then we come over here and you get all of your, uh, your panel controls over here. So all of your cap panel is over here where you can turn on the lights, turn them off, lock the doors from the ends from over here. Uh, you can control your your temperatures and stuff from here that that this piece is broken right here So this is one of the things that I'm sending the truck in uh, for repairs so uh, But yeah, this is the space here um, It's not too bad. I mean, I think I'm gonna be able to make this very comfortable uh, Got I already kind of set up just to kind of test it out I kind of set up my computer set up here. I have my monitor there uh, all my computer stuff here so you know it's pretty it's pretty nice it's pretty cool so i mean it's not too bad so it's enough it's enough space to work with here and then when i'm not using it for computer stuff i can just move this all down you get more drawers you get these two drawers here here and here so you can store more stuff in so all in all it's not too bad uh you know you get your overhead cabinets and whatnot where you can put more things and stuff like that um overall not too bad um, you get a lot of storage on the side cabins, which uh, if y'all if y'all want to see that, I can I can walk out and do that. And if you want to see what the what the side uh, cabins look like, it's basically a storage for all of the all your tools and stuff like that. And it goes from one end of the truck to the other end of the truck, and it's a door on each side. But it's pretty. It's enough space to put things like your tool bags, uh, your chains, your uh, your fifth wheel puller, your uh, your nail your your nail remover for when you got to clean the brooms you know all that kinds of stuff all your fluids and stuff has a lot of room to put all that stuff in there you should never really run out of room down there there's a lot of, a lot of room and this in my opinion i don't know unless you're putting all kinds of other crap in there then um then okay but anyways uh yeah that's that's the that's what a kenworth t680 looks like on the inside this is a 2009 um so now let's let's get into some things because let's talk about this situation that I'm in with this truck and my experience with it so far and let me know what you think. Okay guys, so gave you a little bit of tour of the truck that I'm that I've been assigned. This is the truck that I'm going to be using to uh, start doing company driving here hopefully soon. And the reason I say that is what I'm about to get into. So I came to pick up this truck and it did when I walked into the truck it did not look like it was ready to go in my opinion uh, I walked in and um, I saw that the seat cover on the driver's side seat was completely off it was just completely off like it wasn't even on the seat anymore and the seat itself looked pretty messy. The, the armrests were popped out and were just sitting on the floor. Uh, the truck 
I could tell that it was from a, uh, the last person that occupied the truck was an ex-smoker. So you could smell, you know, the cigarette smoke. Personally, I'm not, a, I'm not a cigarette smoker, and I don't really like the smell of cigarette smoke. So it's kind of a little bit off-putting um, on that note. So it was kind of weird to walk into this because I, I mean, I've never done this before. So it was kind of odd to walk in and feel like, well, did they do anything with this truck? Uh, to be fair, I, I didn't, I'm not picking up this truck from the main CFI location. I'm picking it up from one of the sub location, one of the sub terminals. Um, so maybe they do things a little bit different here when it comes to repurposing these trucks. So I walk in, I look at that, I kind of look around and I'm like, mm, this thing doesn't look like anybody's really cleaned it or anything like that. It looks pretty messy. Uh, the previous the previous person that was in here must have been a pretty messy person because um, on the da on the dash I don't know if you saw it in the video or not but on the dash there's um, some like glue crap on on the dashboard uh, glue crap on next to the next to my tablet um, that I guess they used for mounting purposes like to probably to mount GPSs and to mount and to put phone mounts and stuff and I will tell you. If you're gonna mount things on um, cars and stuff like that, try your best to not use super uh, adhesives because what it does is when you're trying to take this stuff off, you ruin the vehicle. Like you just ruined the interior of the vehicle. And this guy, whoever this person was, put so much of that adhesive crap on there that I mean, I would have to take a heat gun to it and apply some heat if I wanted to get that gunk off. It's pretty bad. Um, I was going to ask the shop if maybe there's anything they could do to take it off. I'm assuming they're going to say no. They're probably not going to want to. But uh, what it did, though, what I did, one of the things I did notice was that because of where it was located, it's located right on the radio, or right on top of the radio, that... I guess when they were pulling it off or whatever the guy was trying to get the thing off or something or when he was applying it, I don't really know. It dripped down to the radio dial and on the Kenworth dials, that dial works as, uh, as, two, as two things. It works as the volume and it works as the menu and selection button. So like you press in the dial and you can make your menu selections, set up your Bluetooth devices, all that fun stuff, set up your, your time and your clocks. Well, I'm guessing what happened, because there's glue residue all over the dial, glue probably got into the actual dial, and granted, you can still change the volume, you can't press the button in. So now, I can't set up my Bluetooth device on the radio uh, to listen to like music, and to listen to audiobooks, and all the stuff that I had plans to be able to do, I can't do until I can get that that thing set up to get that thing fixed that's another thing that i'm waiting for a repair uh so when i walked into the truck i saw that i immediately went to the repair shop and was like look guys like this this thing for whatever reason like it doesn't look ready to me it looks like there's some issues going going on and um they're like okay yeah, yeah we'll check it out and so you know they did all that for it also wouldn't power on when i first walked in which is you know these trucks have been sitting here for months sometimes without being used so it's probably gonna happen right but you know they replaced the batteries they fixed the seat it looks real nice now um it turns on it runs and then uh but then i noticed uh, some other things that were kind of wonky with it uh abs light was on for a little bit and then it turned off like it was it was on for like a solid like 15 minutes before it decided to turn off now it hasn't turned back on i mean it turns on it turns off immediately like it should now i'm gonna have to keep an eye on that because yeah i don't want my anti-lock brake system messing up on me while i'm driving uh the dashboard lights those those have turned off a couple of times just randomly and i can't get them to turn back on until i turn the truck off a few times and turn it back on and then they'll come back on so i'm gonna have them check that my passenger window doesn't close or doesn't open or close so i'm gonna have to check that the on the steps on the passenger side there's a plastic fender there to, that covers all the all the stuff where the steps are at 
Well, that fender, for whatever reason, I tried popping it back in. I tried to see why it's so loose, but it's extremely loose. I mean, it's on, but it's like really loose. And I could see a scenario where, you know, I'm hitting high winds. Let's just say like at 30 miles an hour out there. And that thing just comes flying off and hits somebody in the back and causes it and causes an accident. I can see it, right? And then it's like, oh crap, like that's on me, right? And now all that stuff is exposed and everything and it just looks really, really trashy. And I'm probably gonna get stopped by DOT because of that. And I don't really wanna do that. So I'm gonna have them fix that too. Uh, like, like I mentioned uh, earlier in the tour, the, the dial to the temperature control for the cab is broken. So I can't change, I can't manage the, uh, the air temperature back here in the cab. And it can, won't even turn on because I can't even turn on the fan control. So I'm gonna have to have them fix that. So this experience has been kind of wonky to begin with. I'm, I'm still really excited to get out there and to get on the road and start driving this thing and to kind of make this thing my own. Typically the way things work around here is they're gonna start, when you, when, you, when you start off, you're gonna start off in an older truck. You're gonna get your experience. They're gonna make sure that, you know, you're good to go, that you're safe, that you don't, you don't break anything, you don't mess anything up. And if they feel like you're good, like, like you've gotten to that point, then um, they'll switch you out for a newer one, kind of thing. Like they'll give you, they're not gonna just give you the newer truck right off the bat because, hey, they don't know how you work, so. They gotta figure out how you're gonna work on your own first before they just hand you a brand new truck. And uh, so I expected that. Not that I didn't expect that. But I guess to me, I expected a little bit more. I expected this thing to at least be clean, to at least be complete, to at least not have to have so many repairs that are needing to be done because what's happening is that I'm sitting here. I'm sitting here doing this and uh, just trying to kind of fiddle my thumbs a little bit and waiting for these repairs to get uh, to get done instead of getting on the road and you know getting some experience out there already like get started get started working um, luckily my my fleet manager was really cool and she's taking care of everything she's making sure I'm taking care of she's making sure I'm good to go she apologized because she told me this is typically not how things work typically you're gonna you walk into your truck and it's 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 ready to go it's clean it looks good you know and that way you feel nice and inviting when you come home or when you come to what is your home now right for a while your home away from home um, and I just didn't feel like that when I first got in here um, but you know I'm not I, I don't really complain much and I I just feel like I wish this experience would have been maybe a little bit different at the beginning, but I think it's going to turn around here as soon as all these repairs are done and stuff like that. I'm excited to be in the truck. I slept in the truck last night and it was felt pretty good. I slept pretty well and I'm able to, I mean, the AC works, temperature, that's good, right? Uh, all the power stuff works in the power inverters work and all that. So that's good to know there. Uh, so I'm super excited about all this and whatnot and we'll just keep going from there But the one thing that I will tell you if I, I guess if I can give you some advice on This experience so far and if you're a person that's uh, going through school uh, Or getting into the into the business and you're gonna be a company driver and you're gonna get a truck assigned to you check everything before you take it out on the road get, Check to make sure that everything works Everything turns on, dial, you know, dials work, buttons work, uh, everything functions, things are the way that you feel they need to be to make you comfortable because you're going to be driving this thing wherever you're going to go and you're going to be living in it. So you want it to be comfortable for yourself and you want to make sure that, you know, that the two things you want to make sure that you have is one comfort is is comfort and safety those are the two things you really want out of out of out of the truck that you're being assigned you want to feel comfortable in it and you want to feel like you're safe when you're out there driving it so make sure everything works check you know check your lights check your fluids check uh check your belts check all basically you, you want to do like a pre-trip check before 
you even start doing your regular pre-trips like you want to do like a pre-moving check kind of like what i did when i was i like, walked in and i was like this isn't right this isn't right this isn't right this isn't right can we please have this all fixed up before i get into this truck because this is a little bit of a mess in my opinion and i want to be able to feel comfortable in a space that i'm going to be occupying for quite some time for at least the next couple of months right so but i mean all in all it's all good and whatnot but i would definitely check uh make sure to check everything in and out of the truck to make sure you have everything you need because the time to do repairs to do uh, to fix things to replace things is before you leave with your truck out on the road because the last thing you want is to get out on the road and you break down immediately because you didn't check something or you're trying to fix something you're trying to set up something a button a dial or something and you're like oh it doesn't even, it doesn't work like I, I really need to be able to use this function i really need to be able to use this dial and it's not working like you don't want to get caught in the middle of nowhere trying to trying to mess with something that you could have got done while you were at your terminal where you were getting your truck so that's what i'm doing right here right now so i'm making sure that i got every single t crossed and i dotted on this truck before i head out because once i head out my goal is to work as much as i can i want to keep doing my pre-checks and all that fun stuff and things like that to make sure that this thing is good to go as i'm driving it but i feel like as long as I take care of all these things that I can take care of now, I'll be fine later. So that's my that's that's where I'm at with all this stuff right now. I'm still feeling, like I said, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm ready to get out there. And uh, but if there's anything any of y'all out there can suggest to me that I should look for, that I should do before I head out, uh, feel free to leave comments. I'm more than happy to answer them, and, and I read all the comments that people leave. People don't leave a lot of comments on my channel right now but i will read every single comment that you put on there right now um and i will answer them if you want any answers uh but yeah feel free to interact feel free to like subscribe uh, now that i'm in the truck and then i'm going to start driving i'm going to start doing a lot more uh putting a lot more content out there just kind of documenting my journey this is my first time ever doing something like this like i've said in the past videos so i'm really excited i'm really ready for it and uh ready to share my experience with everybody but other than that guys uh i'm gonna take off i'm gonna try to see if i can relax here for a little bit before i get called in for the repairs and uh, hopefully i'll have some more content coming out here really quickly including including drive content like actual like driving out on the road i got a dash cam i'm gonna set that up so um yeah be on the lookout for more content coming soon guys but until then peace be safe out there and be nice later guys